We've talked about wealthy men who got their riches from different business ventures before on this channel. From royalty to being a star football player, the people we talk about here are more or less honest and transparent in their dealings. However, today we're looking at different sets of people. From theft to drug dealing to murder, these people aren't your conventional businessmen and you'll be thoroughly shocked by the way some of them rose to notoriety. Before we venture into the dark side of high society, be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe, and ring that bell for updates on videos like this one. Done? Okay, let's get into it. Rayful Edmund By the age of 22, Ray was already making millions of dollars and he was well known for his fancy cars, expensive clothes, and wild partying. One time, he even spent about $457,619 on an exclusive Georgetown store that specialized in expensive Italian men's clothing, but the fountain of his wealth wasn't something as tame as investing in crypto. Rayful Edmund III was a notorious drug lord in Washington, D.C. in the 1980s, and he found an endless well of money in dealing drugs. At one point, his estimated yearly revenue was $300 million. However, Ray didn't only spend his money on cars and parties, he had to put some of it back into the business in the form of, let's say, philanthropy. He gave district residents money for rent, medicine, and whatever else they needed, especially to the families that worked for him. These people were so grateful for his generosity that they became his loyal street enforcers, responsible for as many as 30 murders by the time he was arrested. By the time he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, Ray was already worth a whopping 50 million. Frank Lucas Frank was a man worth millions and he was not afraid to flaunt his wealth. If you asked him, he'd tell you he was making $1 million a day and his net worth is estimated to sit around $52 million, an amount that would be as much as $541 million today if you account for inflation. In 1971, he wore a chinchilla coat worth $100,000 and a $25,000 hat to a boxing match between Muhammad Ali and Joe Fraser. He also had better seats in the house than Diana Ross and Frank Sinatra. However, Lucas wasn't some random rich man who loved boxing. He was a heroin kingpin who operated from the late 1960s in Harlem, New York City. He claimed that he smuggled heroin into the US from Thailand using false bottoms on dead American servicemen's coffins. Frank flaunted his wealth despite all risks because, in his words, he couldn't have people who made less money than him walking around thinking they were kings of the world. Talk about a proud man. Big Meech If you thought Frank Lucas was wealthy, well, Big Meech has a net worth of $100 million. That's a whole $48 million more than the drug lord. Demetrius Edward Big Meech Flannery was the founder of the Black Mafia family, a money laundering and drug trafficking front in the US, alongside his brother Terry Lee, Southwest T. Flannery. He and his brother had about 500 people pushing cocaine for them and made more than $271 million in profits from the sale of drugs alone. To keep the law away, he created a front for his far less than legal business dealings. He established BMF Entertainment in the early 2000s and became the co-owner of Juice Magazine. Through these ventures, he was able to get acquainted with famous rappers like Diddy, Jay-Z, T.I., and Young Jeezy. Mitch was so rich and he spent his money partying hard with other rappers. To this day, BMF parties are still known as legendary. He was jailed in 2005. But before that, Meech was smart enough to keep some assets away from the police before he was arrested, hence his net worth. Carlos Letter At his peak, Carlos Letter had a net worth of $2.7 billion. Now, he's just some 73-year-old man living in Germany. But back in the 70s, Carlos was a sly, ruthless, and dangerous drug dealer. He was the co-founder of the Madeline Cartel, a powerful Colombian drug syndicate and terrorist group that was founded and led by the infamous Pablo Escobar. Carlos was rich, but he was no party animal. The bulk of his wealth went back into the business, and it was estimated that in 1978, he spent about $4.5 million on Norman's K a private island used for his drug smuggling. He succeeded in bribing authorities and successfully transported 300 kilograms of cocaine to the island daily. 
Carlos's dirty money went up to billions, and at one point he was so rich that he even offered to pay the Colombian external debt. In fact, he easily offered to do so to the then Colombian president, Alfonso Lopez Michelson, in exchange for a free, unregulated area for drug trafficking. Violent, proud, and extremely wealthy, that was Carlos Lunder. Amado Carrila Fuentes Amado Carrillo Fuentes, aka the Lord of the Skies, was a man who built a multi-billion dollar drug empire on the corpses of his rivals. Seriously, once he could, Amado assassinated his own boss, Rafael Aguilar Guayarro, to seize control of the Juarez Cartel, a Mexican drug organization that was famous for mutilating corpses and dumping them in public places to instill fear into the public and local law enforcement and their rivals. Yikes. Throughout his career, it's estimated that he made over $25 billion. That's almost $40 billion by modern rates. His nickname came from the fact that he was the first drug lord to use private planes to transport cocaine worldwide. In this regard, he owned a large fleet, including 30 Boeing 727s. Airplanes aside, he had a lot of his loot invested in real estate. His large Middle Eastern style personal house was called the Palace of a Thousand and One Nights, and he also owned a lavish $4.5 million, 10,000 square feet, two story that comes with an indoor pool and enough garage space for 30 cars. So far, all of our criminal millionaires have ended up in jail. Becarillo died of plastic surgery complications when he was trying to alter his looks to evade the law. He was given a lavish and highly expensive funeral in Guamachulito, Sinaloa, one truly fit for a king, or at least a highly feared drug lord. Leona Helmsley Leona, the queen of mean, Helmsley, was a businesswoman who had a net worth of $4.8 to $5 billion by the time she died. She had a reputation for being tyrannical and cruel towards her employees and family. But come on, we've covered bloodthirsty killers in this video. This is nothing compared to all that. Leona's crimes are also pretty tame compared to the drug lords we've covered. She was charged with federal income tax evasion, extortion, and a host of other income-related crimes in 1988. Before that, Leona was a champion real estate mogul. She and her husband built an empire procuring a lot of property in New York, including the Empire State Building. They also owned Park Lane Hotel and several other hotels in Florida and other states. Leona Helmsley was so rich by the time she died in 2007 that she was able to leave $12 million to her precious dog, Trouble. A judge eventually cut the dog's inheritance to just $2 million, but that's certainly only what a truly rich tyrant would give to their pet. El Chapo Joaquin Archivaldo Guzman Loera, also known as El Chapo, or El Rapido, was the head of the Sinaloa drug cartel. It was one of the most powerful criminal organizations in Mexico. His drug trades didn't stop at the United States, but almost all major countries in the world, he amassed a fortune of almost $13 billion. He lived a luxurious life till his incarceration. He made so much money selling drugs that he once owned a pair of yachts, a fleet of Learjets, and a private zoo with tigers, crocodiles, and panthers. He's currently serving life in prison without the possibility of parole plus 30 years, and he forfeited assets worth more than $12.6 billion. Pablo Escobar You've probably heard this name before. In fact, you heard it earlier in this video. And that's because mentioning famous drug lords without mentioning the king of cocaine himself is a crime on its own. Pablo Escobar is not only the richest narco, but he was also the wealthiest criminal in history. His cartel led the Medellin cartel, and weekly, he made about $420 million, and up to $22 billion a year. He was so staggeringly rich that he made the Forbes list of international billionaires from 1987 until 1993. He spent $2,500 on rubber bands each month to keep his stack of money neat. Once, his daughter was cold when he was at a hideout with his family, and he set $2 million on fire just to keep her warm. If you think all that is crazy, Pablo Escobar is the same man that chalked in a $2.1 billion loss in his business profits each month. And the amount didn't bother him because, with all the money he had, what was a measly $2.1 billion? He pulled in so much money that he was listed as the 7th richest man in the world in 1989. 
By the time of his death, he had a huge estimated net worth of $30 billion, the equivalent of $70 billion today. His money didn't only go into pimping drugs and causing mayhem, however. He was known for giving large sums of money to the poor and building houses for the homeless along with community soccer fields. His generosity was very much appreciated by those he helped and he earned the nickname Robin Hood because of it. Griseldo Blanco For the third time, the Medellin cartel has shown up on our list and for the first time, they're showing us that what a man can do, a woman can do just as well. Griselda Blanco distributed drugs for the Medellin cartel back in the 70s and 80s, at the peak of her career worth an astounding $2.26 billion. Griselda Blanco is known as the richest female cartel leader, and she didn't get that title by just moving drugs. Her violence and cunning made her famous and propelled her in the industry. She reportedly smuggled more than three tons of cocaine into the United States annually, bagging about $80 million per month for the cartel. She was called the godmother of cocaine, La Madrina, the Black Widow, because all three of her husbands wound up dead. She was also one of the most bloodthirsty crime bosses of all time and was allegedly responsible for the murders of at least 200 men, women, and children. Some were involved with the cartel, but others happened to be innocent bystanders who got caught in the widow's web. She was murdered in 2012, but her life of crime and evil legacy made the Black Widow one very rich spider woman. Al Capone Last but not least, we have Al Capone, famous gangster, ruthless gang leader, and of course, billionaire. Alphonse Gabriel Capone, aka Scarface or Al Capone, was an American gangster and businessman who was co-founder and boss of Chicago Outfits. Al Capone was known for his violence and ruthlessness in eliminating his rivals. He was estimated to have a net worth of about $1.3 billion. While he was alive, he had extravagant tastes and spent his money on diamond jewelry, bespoke silk suits, banquet dinners, vintage champagne, a 7-ton armored car heavy security detail, and a waterfront Miami Beach mansion. He was arrested in Philadelphia for carrying concealed deadly weapons and was sentenced to a year in prison in 1930, and was released nine months later for good behavior. Capone ended up dying of a stroke and pneumonia in 1930, but as a man of that much money and power, he left a legacy behind that remains to this day. That's all for our top 10 list of the baddest, most notorious billionaires out there. From drug dealers to tax evaders, we covered it all, but let us know if there's someone you think should have made the list down in the comments below.